It's so it's an interesting time to put out a pop record like you have, with uh, not a lot of pop music stuff happening in in, uh, in the cities and stuff. So how, how the record came out on March fifth? How has that worked out for you? How how do you feel about putting it out and how the reaction has been? I think the re the reaction's been brilliant and really positive, and I was quite. When we decided to put to schedule the album for March last well last year when we were discussing it, I thought, oh, you know, we'll be out of lockdown then; it'll all be fine. <laughs> and, and I think like, everybody thought that. Yes, <laughs> how could it take so, this long? <laughs> exactly. So, I was a little feeling a little bit insecure because obviously, normally you're backing it up with a lot of concerts and yeah. you're doing yeah. press, but you're doing all this support stuff and you're physically on the road and doing stuff. So that's been quite stressful because. Um, you know, it's just made me feel quite insecure as an artist, you know, to not have that be, you know, with the band all the time and stuff. But, you know, it's good. I'm not complaining because all the reviews have been amazing and the response is really positive and everybody's, you know, been really nice about it. So, yep, oh, yep. I was just reading the review in The Guardian and they're glowing, of course. So that's a, that's a good thing. But, but I love the, the fact that, especially I think because of the nature of it being a pop album, people seem to be, uh, obsessed almost with comparing you to other artists on this record. And uh, I saw in the comments and something, uh, some guy uh, had a whole list. This song sounds like broadcast. This one sounds like Prince. This one sounds like Tame Impala, uh, Stereo Lab, blah, blah, blah. And I'm wondering how you react to stuff. Because some people cringe when they hear that. And some people are like, you know, quite honored <laughs> I, do, I just kind of take no notice i mean there's been like ca comparisons to like broadcast gold frap stereo lab and it's like they're all people i like anyway and we've probably listened to the same music and have right. the same kind of you know maybe the same similar fan base so i'm just like uh, I, I i'm not bothered really i mean when i release modern cosmology it's like similar things and you know but then there was like space rock comparisons for my last album so yeah it doesn't bother me, really. That's cool. That's a good thing. <laughs> so what were you thinking? Were you thinking in those terms when you started making this record in terms of making a, a, a pop, more poppy record? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the last good few albums, probably since 2010, have been like conceptual records. And they've been about other like stories about other people or other people's lives or films. Or they've been like I did a, a fairy tale album based right. around like something I made up. And I just thought it'd be really a lot more challenging and a bit more different to do something which was, you know, like 10 songs, which more or less all of them were like pop songs. And so, yeah, that was that was the challenge. I deliberately did it. And um, yeah, it was it was quite challenging, to be honest. <laughs> it was, it, <laughs> what it was, was it's a lot more challenging than I, than I anticipated. In know? what way? Because when you're when production wise, when you've got like four minutes or around about that to 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 get all your information in, and I still want to be experimentation, you know, do experimentational stuff. I still want to be creative. I still want to have certain arrangements in there and sounds. But then I've given myself less time to do it because obviously it's more of a pop song. So, right. So that that was more of a challenge to you know get the information in quicker. Right, right. Kind of giving yourself you know, self self-imposed restrictions as far as yeah, the... yeah. Because like when you've got a ten-minute space rock song, you know, you can kind of meander and bring things in and out slowly. But with yes. pop, it's a bit more brutal. Your your cuts have got to be your edits have got to be brutal. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So, um, do you listen to pop music, current pop music, on the radio or whatever it is that people listen on these days? <laughs> yeah, my my kids. Um, listen to a lot of R&B, hip hop, rap, um, you know, a lot of like Tyler and stuff like that. And uh, um, Doja Cat, No Name, Princess Nokia, you know, loads of stuff like that. And, uh -huh. and you know, a lot of pop stuff in there. So that's kind of, I'm always like that. Turn that music down. I've become like my own parents, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, that's kind of seeped in and, and influenced me, I, I guess. Right. Um, the the playlist of stuff. Did, did your parents' musical taste influence you? Uh, no, I mean they listen to like because we're you know my parents are Scousers from Liverpool and right. so they listen to a lot of like Mersey Beat stuff and and the Beatles and Elvis you know a lot of rock and roll uh -huh. and then a bit of like Dennis Rus Dennis Russos and Nana Mascori for some reason. So. <laughs> <That's interesting. laughs> I don't know where that comes from. Greek prog. 
<laughs> Aphrodite's child or something. <laughs> it's great. Um, so maybe we can touch on a couple of the, the tracks. Uh, there's one called The Revolution of Supervisions, and there's a video that you've made that goes along with it. And it has a, a very uh, distinctive beat, and it sounds very familiar. I mean, kind of taken off from Bowie and Fame and James Brown and all that stuff. I think people all like to mention Prince in this one as well. Prince for sure. Um, that that actual guitar sound though is it derives from um, a guitar synth, which is like something like you know the band Hot Chocolate. Right. Oh yes. So they they use the guitar synth on that song. Everyone's a winner. Right. And they've got two of them in the studio, and one of them was owned by Status Quo. So every time I go in the studio, I go, oh, let's get the guitar synth out. But when we used it for this song, it sounded it did sound more like Prince. You know, uh -huh. applied in a pop context, it right. sound, um, you know, a bit more sort of seventies as well. So, so yeah, that's that's where that's where it all kind of started, really. Uh, so, when you're in the studio like that, are you working more by yourself? Do you have people working with you? What's the process like? Well, the process is normally I'll start an idea in my demo studio or at home, and uh -huh. then bands may work on them with me if I've got some drum and bass ideas and then we go into the studio and then sometimes the band hasn't heard anything <laughs> or they've heard these kind of crappy demos which right. then I say let's do this and you know I'm that kind of directing them and then they go away and then it's just me and the engineer Henry who I've worked with for a long time now and kind of we understand with each other and work together well and quickly so then we're able to creatively just you know chop and change stuff and edit stuff and move stuff around so when the band can listen back to it they go like why is it different now because <laughs> you just like turned everything on its head really right 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 and and this this particular track well the, in general your music is poppy and dancey and kind of upbeat but this, the lyrics are not necessarily so like in this track you talk about losing yourself looking at yourself and finding nothing which seems rather uh, somewhat dark is that something that you like to to juxtapose against each other the darker lyrics against the the more upbeat music yeah you've got it really I mean I, when I was writing <laughs> a lot of the album um I was kind of in a bit of a no I wasn't depressed I was just in a bit of a deep funk about stuff I was a bit low and I was trying to write these I wanted to write a pop album but then the 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 lyrics I was writing were quite miserable <laughs> <You know? laughs> Well, the melodies were quite poppy, so it was a bit strange that um, I was applying some kind of, you know, a lot of emotion to how I felt about certain things to songs and, and how, you know, angry I felt about certain stuff or sad. And yet the, the melody was quite melodic and poppy, so mm -hmm. quite different. But, uh, you know, if you think back, that I just think oh, you mentioned the Beatles. I mean, they, they did quite a bit of that. Pop music is kind of like that. It's kind of subversive sometimes, you know, you're singing along and then you realize you're wallowing in misery in no time at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think like Hartlow, for instance, it's it's definitely inspired by, there was this song called I'm 28 by Tony Basil. Right. And it's actually written by Graham Goldman from 10CC. Oh, 10CC, It's yeah. an amazing song. It's the B-side of um, one of her famous hits from the 60s. And it's that kind of girl group sound. And she's right. singing like a really poppy girl group sound song and it's got these really sort of tragic pop lyrics so with it that was kind of inspired as well you know that kind of song i'll have so, to check that one out i was wondering now you you've written that album of pop songs could you see someone covering it and making a pop hit out of it who would you like my, to do my song yeah <laughs> yeah yeah if there's somebody kind of like young and famous and can uh you know make me some publishing then that would be nice i don't yeah. mind you know I think that, um, you know, if somebody wanted to cover something, I wouldn't be that bothered about it. As long as it was something somebody I liked, you know. Right. I think it must be really, really awful if somebody you don't like covers one of your songs and you're just like, oh, no. No, it would be awful. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen. Uh, so this is your 11th album, and you've done stuff even before that, obviously, with different bands and stuff. 
So where do you draw inspiration from now? Do you, do you, do you think, oh my God, I've made 10 albums. What am I going to do next? Or are you kind of brimming with ideas? I think that I still, I'm excited about um, experimenting with music. There's still, you know, it's like things like, I can't play the drums properly. And I think it's not right. I'm going to learn how to play the drums. And so the next album will be, you know, me playing maybe some of the drums probably right. quite badly, but it's things like that. I don't, um, I like spontaneity and I don't like to know too much about what I'm doing as well, you know? So I think there's, there's so much room for, for keeping learning and, you know, keeping challenging myself and uh, I sound like a football player, <laughs> but <laughs> yep. it's, it's that kind of thing. It's like, I don't, I don't really get bored really. I mean, I do think I've thrown the towel in like, you know, every couple of years ago, oh, I can't be dealing with this anymore, but then, you know, I'll start writing again and I really, you know, start gigging and I really enjoy it. So mm -hmm. one thing that's interesting, I think you're obviously in the UK, but your sound seems to be more European based, uh, you know, kraut rock and all sorts of, you know, yeah. the synthy synth Why, why do you think that is? Well, I think that, I mean, my, my husband is a record collector and <laughs> so he, he collects records and he releases a lot of on some of it, you know, it's quite weird music, a lot of world music, a lot of foreign language music. And I think that the palette of that I've, I've kind of absorbed subconsciously and heard stuff in the background, you know, whether it's like film soundtracks or unheard sort of um, instrumental pieces from an orchestra, you know, it's a, it's a massive world of music that, that isn't kind of unheard. And right. so, I think that's probably why it seeped it seeped into my consciousness, I guess. Right, right, right. Yeah, excellent. And do you spend well, there's that whole Brexit thing that happened. So is that going to affect you, do you think, as a musician? Yeah, I mean, already um I can't make any I mean, aside from the pandemic, I can't make any plans at the minute to right. go out yeah. of the UK. Daphne. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Quiet. I can't make any plans to go outside the UK yet until I know exactly what system, because each each territory now, each country now, is is has got different rules. It's not just, right. you know, obviously you go to Europe and you can just drive around so right. many countries and in my van and it was brilliant and I loved doing that. And now it's like, you know, different rules for each country. So I think that maybe they'll try and put something in place to make it easier for musicians, but yeah. I mean, the thought of not being able to go outside the UK easily and to, you know, to do gigs is really quite pushing, quite depressing, really. Yep, because, yep, yep. you know, you, you meet so many amazing people all over the place and everybody's really nice and hospitable and, you know, treat you really well. So it's like, I don't, I don't want that experience to be out of my life, you know, I really yeah, enjoy yeah. it. It sounds like, if nothing else, there's a lot more red tape attached to trying to get there from where you are now yeah I mean I am the kind of person like I am sort of over ambitious and think oh we'll just do it anyway we'll find a way yeah you know I, I don't know how but I think we'll get around it somehow you know? yeah, okay now the, the title of the album is flock and there's a song called flock and uh, there's a, a I think a, a Le Bois sonic Le Bois sonic. <laughs> which means sonic wood if I'm not mistaken so, yeah yeah. Tell me what that is all about, please. When I, I was first had this sort of idea to do a pop album, I did have this kind of vision of the first track would be me kind of um, visually entering into like some kind of medieval forest and there were birds and it was kind of, and I could hear all this kind of like French medieval instrumentation, like the hurdy-gurdy and the bonbon. And I had this like vision of the, the album opener to be like that. And it didn't it didn't work to be like that. Ended up being like the the, the first track on side B. But <laughs> that that's where it kind of visually started really. Uh -huh. um, and it kind of guided me, you know, to, to do that song. And that, that song is quite um, more, it's more like a spiritual jazz, I guess. It's more kind of, um, you know, lots of flutes and 
yep. and the, the way the drums are, you know, it's quite different. Attempted to get Ian Anderson to come in and play songs from the wood for you on his flute. Oh something. yeah, well I would I would love that. <laughs> but it's interesting it's you when you when you describe your the inspiration for the songs, you're very visual and you have a like a picture in your mind. It seems like a mm-hmm. does that go for pretty much every song that you write? Um, for a lot of them, yeah. I think I don't know whether it's my brain's way of trying to remember remember the song i don't i don't know i haven't got that what's it called when people go like i can smell colors oh yes i know what you're talking about yeah yeah yeah. and it's a great word too (laughs) yeah yeah i'm not it's not like that because a lot of people say oh yeah i've got that but mine's more like um just visualizing stuff and and the way it looks right which is weird now the the album ends with a song called solarized And again, there's like this narcissism mentioned in there. And so you have that kind of darkness and light happening. Why did you choose to put that at the end of the record? for me to sequence this record and sequencing as an album lover I'm right. sure you, like like yourself probably it, uh, there's a few on the back there <laughs> yeah yeah well sequencing is important isn't it the way an album I think of things as an album term and the way they flow uh-huh. but I couldn't I couldn't sequence it properly I had to get my husband to do it because I, I sequenced it once and it was like really bad when he was saying <laughs> you need to step away from this you're too close to it and he actually made a really good job of it so I was like fair enough but that's awesome. where Solarize ends up on the record, and I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I, I think it's 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 kind of optimistic. Being the outro to the the album, it's kind of ending on an up, and and I think it suits it. You know, mm-hmm. regardless of what I'm saying about somebody who's annoyed me for being narcissistic and, <laughs> and whatever, it's, you know. Is it, it written is in, a, about somebody in particular or someone in general? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, so since you've been kind of locked down and you're kind of living out in the woods there, uh, have you been being creative all this time or getting time to, to think about what you're going to do next? Well, the whole, basically the whole time I've been in lockdown, it's been like finishing, sorry, finishing the record and doing all the, the assets that go with it, like all yeah. the album cover, the, you know, the photos and then interviews and then, everything else that goes with it so I've been really busy um and also I've started rehearsing with the band now sorry Daphne come here sorry she's growling <laughs> so I've been rehearsing with <laughs> rehearsing with the band and that's like coming together because we're having to relearn everything because as I said I re-edited a lot of stuff and changed it so right. yeah. kind of turned yeah. it on its head a lot of the parts from what they originally originally did but yeah I've just I've got other other um projects got other projects um on the go i've got another vanilla album which is a project to do with two of the band members right. and so we're probably finished that this year yeah just keep busy Great. we've got videos Great. to do which is always quite exciting is it fun yeah always it's always um you know it's i don't know it's always a bit scary because i don't really like being photographed or anything or filmed but then it's actually always a fun day whenever you right. do a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always, you know, working with the people that I work with. It's always a good laugh. So. Uh, I like the photo of the artwork where you're sitting in front of all these empty uh, bird cages. It looks like everything's flown the coop and you're kind of waiting for them to return. Is that kind of what you had in mind? <laughs> so, yeah, the sleeve was um, made and designed by my husband. Uh. And I gave him kind of free free reign on that really i just said i wanted it to be bright colors and i wanted me to be in it in the, yep. in the actual photo, in the center of it so because it was called it was like i need a title and that you know because i didn't i didn't I, di- I didn't decide what the title was going to be for a while and then once he had the title it all kind of came to place but i've still so we built this installation in my studio and it's still there now all these boxes <laughs> everywhere <Really? laughs> there in the middle 
Yeah. So I'm well, one, maybe one day you'll walk in and it'll be full of birds. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be not probably pigeons. Were my yeah, probably. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 well excellent so hopefully you'll be out and, and when you do do perform these songs in front of people what do they change do you how do you react depending on how the audience in front of you is reacting no i try and stick to um as much of the the sort of song being like you know like itself as possible i don't tend to do different versions for live and i think people want to hear that i think that I, I deliberately sort of designed the album to to work live as well because even though I do like doing space rock numbers for 10 minutes yep I do like the feeling of when you do a pop song and everybody's got their hands in the air and yeah. they're singing along to you and it's really cool and it's like after you know the the past few years I just think it would be really nice to just get on stage and have a whole load of bunch of pop songs together and just mm you know go through them so yeah that's what i'm looking forward to just that kind of joy and unity of of doing gigs again really excellent well we have gigs here in new zealand um, it's-, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing my i said i had to do this interview because my um my uncle and auntie and my cousins live in um napier right so so i was like i have to get something out there <laughs> absolutely so- yeah you know it's been it's strange because we uh, have no international artists coming in, obviously, because there's, yeah. they're locked out. So we're dependent on our local scene. But fortunately, it's very strong and they kind of are rising to the challenge. And it's very, very cool. So and hopefully you'll come down here and play for us at some point. Well, I would absolutely love to. I've never been to New Zealand. So, uh, yeah, you got to do it. It's be like a dream, really. It's not bad. Yeah. Sorry about the dog. <laughs> I love the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying to see him, actually. <laughs> you want to show you? Yeah, I'll go and get her. Hang All on. right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's a noise machine, Daphne. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. And thanks for talking thank to me. Thank you very much. Have a nice time. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye.